Hey there guys, Ian here. Today I'm bringing you a Cinema 4D tutorial about Expresso and how you can actually use Expresso to kind of drive your animations and kind of, neat, kind of neaten your scene up a little bit so you're not working with hundreds of keyframes. If we jump into our scene here, I actually have part of the animation I made quite recently. Um, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Um, it's only a segment of it, it doesn't have the back here, it only has um, the kind of barrel end of it. And I kind of wanted to show you how with one uh, slider I could control the doors here opening as well as this barrel um, coming out. Uh, this uses a bit of espresso and kind of a way to manage it all quite easily basically. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert a new null object. Null object and call it animation controller. Doesn't matter what you call it, but this kind of just makes sense. And to make it even more obvious, what you can do is actually say add to new layer. And what you get here is a little rectangle colored. And so it's quite easy to kind of manage um, whereabouts it is on your um, scene or your objects menu whatever so with this just right click cinema 4d tags and add espresso and you get this scary looking thing come up uh, yours might be in a new window but mine's here because it's just locked in here because I have a new layout well I have a layout which is quite good uh, so basically what we have is the barrel of the gun which is split into three sections as well as the door so for now we'll focus on this barrel and the easiest way to do this is if I open up um, a text editor and I'm just going to make a new document. Um, I'm just going to have this here so I can actually um, kind of write down everything as it's going along. So to begin with uh, we're going to see the Z position of actually each of these objects where we want it to be in the end. So the fracture object here, I'm going to copy the name and in the document go to here and I'm going to put, in fact, start and end and for the end I want the fracture to be minus 90 centimeters. And for the middle, I want it at 35. So, middle, I'm going to put to 35 centimeters. And the barrel end is at 80 centimeters. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is actually move this back until it's actually inside the middle one and I'm going to make this actually minus 190 just to make it easier so start I'm going to have the end the middle and the fracture so the fracture one which is the tip is at minus 190 the middle if I drag this one so it's back inside is actually at minus 20 centimeters and the end will be just make sure that's right the end will be at 25 centimeters okay so now what we want to do is just going to go back so everything's back out and in our Expresso, all we want to do is drag in, um, in fact, no, quickly, on the actual animation controller, uh, missed our quick step, is go to user data, add user data, and I'm going to call this gun barrel. And the slider will be from 0 to 100%, and just click OK. So now we actually have a barrel and that will just go from 0 to 100. 
Uh, it doesn't do anything now because we need to link it up. So if we go back to our Espresso and drag in our controller, just like that, just from the objects menu, drop it in. Just left click on this right hand side, go to user data and gun barrel. And on the other side, we're going to have the barrel end, the barrel middle, and the fracture. And what we're going to do is just right, uh, left click on here, go to uh, coordinates, position, and position Z, and just do this for each of them as we're moving them only on the Z axis. Um, if you have something different, you'd have it here, but on this example, it's the Z position. Now, we can't just link it up because what we're trying to do is make it from a percentage into a number. So we're actually going to right click again, new node, Expresso, calculate range mapper. And we actually want three of these. So holding down control, we can just drag and it makes a duplicate. And here is where we're going to change all the values. So what we're inputting is um, a percentage. So that will go from 0 to 100. And the output will be to um, user defined which should be all right. And the data type is real because they're real numbers. So the input goes from 0 to 100 and the output one, for, so this is for our barrel end. If we go back to our um, notepad here, the end goes from 25 to 80. So 25, 80 and you can just link that up. But we're not going to do it just yet, we're just gonna link these first ones just until we get everything in. So input is degrees and outputs um, user defined. And this is for the middle, so go back. This goes from minus 20 to 35. So minus 20, 35. And Finally, we have um, the fracture, which goes from minus 190 to ni minus 90. And now if we link these up, just by drawing a line between them, if we go back, you can see, ooh, that's interesting. Why hasn't that one worked? Aha, uh -huh, because I've made that degrees, not percentage, which is my bad. So now if we go back to our controller, you can see we have it coming out as we move this. And what you can actually do is just drag that onto your um, scene and display um ooh, what did I what did I do for that? Um here uh, if you click on this you can actually play with it straight into the scene and you can also make a keyframe, which is pretty cool. So now what you can do is we're going to actually do the same with the barrel doors, which is actually just um, the radius of here. So we don't want it to open, well, we kind of want this to actually um, finish opening at, say, when this is at 45%. So we want it to kind of stop opening around here, but the gun will actually continue to go. So this is simple again, just drag in our cloner. We'll make a duplicate of the range mapper. And we're actually working in 
centimeters still here, so that's all fine. Um, but what we can do is actually clamp the upper and make it so it goes to only 45% and I've got this here, the upper one at 16.65 centimeters. So I'll put that in here and the lower zero. And for the actual object it's going to, it's the object radius. So we can go to object properties and radius and link these up as well. So now if we go back to our view, we can actually, you can see we play through and it stops when we get to 45%. Now obviously you can change that value to whatever you like. So you could say at 80, for example, you just got to be careful it doesn't kind of intersect with your object like it does there. So um, in my case, I kept it maybe at 55. And you can see when we play through. Now to do this entire animation, we can make a keyframe at 0% and then at 4 seconds in, we have it at 100%. And then if we highlight both of these and make it a linear keyframe, now when we play through, kind of glitches a bit, um, but that's due to the um, ball object. I can actually change that um, here. Now when we play through, uh, we get this very slow animation, uh, which you might be able to see better there. Now obviously mine was a bit faster than the actual thing, but this is just for demonstration. You can see here, very quickly with only two keyframes, we're able to drive everything here. I can actually go back to my original scene, and um, if I go out a bit, maybe to, yeah, we'll just go to this one for now. In my animation control, I actually have four, so, um, mine actually control the cracks on um, on our object so they actually uh, move using the position of a random effector and a plane effector so I'm able to drive both of them um, simply by using these uh, you can't really see it because there's oh no there's not um, yeah, you can see we have this being driven um, as well as the door in the back can open and the gun can come out. So it's really easy to keyframe everything just because you have four sliders here um, which are also down here um, and you can simply just move these around and it controls every part of your animation more or less. Um, in more, more, in more complex things, you might have multiple controllers, you might have more down here, but it's a really quick and easy way to kind of just clean up your scene um, and really be able to manage your keyframes a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something. Uh, this has been Ian, and I'll see you next time.